Good evening, everybody, and welcome to uh, tonight's licensing committee. Um, thank you all for coming. Uh, I'd just like to quickly welcome all the new members to the committee um, and welcome back uh, any returning members from last year. Um, we'll get straight into the agenda. Uh, apologies for absence. Um, I haven't received any, but um, Councillor John Wade is going to be about 10 minutes late, um, so he should be joining us shortly. He's just on his way back from London. Is there any other apologies at all? Okay. Um, agenda item number two uh, is the appointment of a vice chair. Um, so we'll take a nomination for vice chair. Uh, Councillor Cooper. Thanks, Chair. Um, I would like to uh, nominate uh, Councillor Tina Clements for the appointment of vice chair. She has a really keen interest in licensing matters. She helped and supported me last year in my first year, and uh, I'd, I'd like to see her uh, uh, reprise that role as vice chair of licensing. Seconder for that, Councillor Jay. Okay, um, and I would like to nominate uh, Councillor Richard Kingston, um, and we've got a seconder in Councillor Lee. Can I second that, please, Chair? Thank you very much. Um, we'll take a vote on the first nomination first. All those in favour of Councillor Tina Clements. All those against. Any abstentions? So we've got nobody against. How does that work? No abstentions, no against. I can't we'll retake that then. Yes, yeah. yeah. Retake this one and then the next one will be straight to the next Just not done anything. Yeah. Okay. Councillor Kingston. If it assists, Chair, by the very nature of the fact that somebody doesn't vote for or against is normally assumed to be an abstention. Okay. Okay, so we move on to the next yeah. one because it's not passed. Okay. Um, because we've had, oh, I don't know how many abstentions we've had then. One, two, three, four, five. Because we had uh, the abstentions that we've had, so we'll move on to the next vote because that one hasn't carried. Um, so all those in favour of Councillor Richard Kingston. All those against. Any abstentions? One, two, three. three. Okay, that's carried. Congratulations, Councillor Kingston. Okay, moving on to agenda item number three, minutes of the previous meeting. Um, is it your wish that I sign them as a true record? I'll for a mover for them. Councillor Maycock, thank you, and a seconder. Okay, got that. Yeah, we've got a second. Thank you. Uh, I'll sign them. Uh, all those in favour, sorry? On, and I can't read the name. Uh, Jan Wardrop, yeah. sorry, thank you. Uh, agenda item number four any declarations of interest? None. Okay. So that brings us on to the main portion of the agenda, uh, which is agenda item number five uh, the charitable collections policy 2024 to 2028. And I'll hand over to Sarah to present this to the committee. Thank you, Chair. The Council, in its capacity as licensing authority, is required to consider applications and issue permits and licences for charitable collections which take place in public areas and from house to house. There is currently no policy in force for these activities and it's considered necessary and appropriate for such a policy to be prepared, consulted upon and published in order to ensure that applications for this type of authorisation are considered and determined in a fair, consistent and transparent manner. The draft policy sets out the legal requirements and application processes along with the licensing authorities' approach to preventing nuisance to residents and businesses located within Tamworth Borough and the enforcement of unlicensed activities. 
Also contained in the policy is reference to an agreement we were told with the Institute of Fundraising who would manage the direct debit collectors within the town centre. The licensing team issued 60 street collection and house to house collection permits from April 22 to March 23 and the committee is asked to recommend that the draft charitable collection policy be approved for public consultation. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Has anybody got any questions, comments or amendments? Uh, Councillor Kingston. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, um, went through this because as somebody who for many years has sat freezing my backside off on the back of Father Christmas's sleigh as it's been dragged around the borough, although I no longer am, so therefore I didn't need to declare an interest. Um, there are some things in the street collection items that concern me greatly and would affect both of the two organisations that take the Santa sleigh around the town's uh, suburbs. Um, you've got on there on page four, or is it page 14, um, general principles, no more than three collections per charity per calendar year will be allowed in Tamworth Borough. I think that needs to be clarified just a little bit because if you look at the rotary and the round table, over the two weeks running up to Christmas, they will be out for 14 times each. So would each night be considered to be a collection or would it be one collection as a whole? I think there's a bit of ambiguity in there. Um, Tamworth Borough Council will restrict item 3.9, will restrict the number of people taking part in a collection to three. Now, the number of people round, going round with the sleigh will be sometimes in excess of 20. Now, some of those will be children who won't be part of the collection, but generally you will have probably 10 collectors out as part of the street collection. So I think there's a little bit of opportunity there to... to um, improve that. 311 below that you've got the use of tables, stalls, trailers, vehicles or other displays. Well of course you are dragging round Father Christmas on the back of the sleigh and um, again that needs to be in my opinion clarified. Um, with the general principles or the application procedure rather um, on page 18 or 4, depending on which document you're looking at, there's reference there to, on 4.21, applicants must also provide details of the following. How much the charity will receive as part of the collection and the percentage of the cost of running the collection. As part of the application procedure, that will be incredibly difficult for the two charities to give you a figure on because one of the main costs will be fuel and sweets. I know this all sounds rather trivial to some of you, but as somebody who's actually filled out the street application license on many occasions years ago, it's this sort of thing that when you're on the form and you're putting the application in, if you've got somebody who isn't from Tamworth and doesn't appreciate the collection and what's going on, can really cause you some headaches when you're applying for the license. Um, that's about it that I noticed. Um, I don't know if you've got any comeback on that or can amend the policy to uh, take into consideration what's just been said. Sarah? Um, yes, thank you. Um, I think with the formulation of the policy, thought was primarily given to collectors within the town. And we are obviously are aware of other forms of collections that happen throughout the year. Um, your first question with relation to the number of collections, that period of 14 days would be classed as one collection, um, not 14 separate, um, 14 separate collections. Um, we can certainly look at um, the number of people taking part. Again, we were looking at instances in the town centre where we didn't want large groups of collectors gathering, which can be quite intimidating um, to members of the public. Um, so we can certainly certainly look at that and as part of the application um, returns have to be completed after the application um, but you're completely correct I think the first bullet point can be deleted but what we'd like to know is what percentage of 
the um, proceeds will be donated to the charity um, because we are aware of instances where a collection has taken place and a very small percentage of that collection is actually given to the charity. So, Kingston? Yeah, thanks for that, absolutely. Um, I think then perhaps you might want to consider clarifying that this street collection, because that's what we have to apply for when we go out with the Santa sleigh, um, there is a difference between a town centre collection and a street collection, because the street collection is what we do when we're in the likes of um, Belgrave and Wilnicott and what have you. Um, town centre collection is obviously needs to be tailored and much more restricted than what happens further out. So is there the opportunity to feed into the policy, the, the distinction between the two, please? Uh, any more questions? Uh, Councillor Clements and then um, Peter. So just on the back of what Rich has just said, where does that leave people like the Royal British Legion, for example? I'm currently the chair, but we do more than, we probably do about six or seven collections a year, but maybe under a different banner. So we, we collect at We Love Tamworth, we collect at um, St George's Day, we've got our own event on Saturday, Armed Forces Day, but throughout the year we've got Remembrance, we've got Poppy Appeal, so where we might not be in the street, we might be in a store, how does that affect us? I believe for some of those events you've got an exemption, a Home Office exemption, so not all of those events will require a permit issued from us. Um, but I can certainly look back over the, the previous 12 months to find out how many events um, the Royal British Legion have been um, given. But as far as I'm aware, the majority of those events are covered by a Home Office exemption. Sarah, it's just been pointed out to me, I think um, point 310 in the policy covers exemptions for the Royal British Legion and Poppy Appeal collections. I don't know if that answers Councillor Clement's question. Yeah. Okay. Um, Councillor Thurgood? Uh, yeah, I'll go back to what Councillor Kingsley said. Um, on the time of Christmas uh, collections, we have a lot of events that are Yeah, I can clarify that a little bit. The actual charity is either the Rotary or the Round Table. They're the organised, so they take in the money. The um, dishing out of the cheques, that's a separate activity. So even though they're from, say, uh, Heart of Tamworth or the Scouts, the money is collected by and on behalf of the Rotary Club or the Round Table. And then a month or two later, Dist distributed accordingly under their aims and objects. Um, yeah, the number of events, I think what Tina was saying, um, such as uh, Rotary having theirs, but also I'm thinking mayoral uh, charity fundraising where you haven't got three, You've probably got 33, 40 in a year. Um, has that got special exemption within the proposal? Do all those collections need a permit? I'm sorry? Do all those collections need a permit and are they held on the street? I don't street? know. Um, probably T. Uh, sorry. <laughs> so. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Is it the Small Society Lottery? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So those events will be covered by a different type of permit. It wouldn't fall under the street collection. Okay, no, yeah. no chance of anybody sort of saying, well, you're saying transparency, but this no, is No, absolutely not. Okay, and the other thing is the, um, not that they're good charities, I do support them, 
but like our ambulance, they come knocking on your door and you feel pressured to actually um, sign the form to um, approve a, a deduction of so much a month. I mean, that's sort of a drip feed type of charity to, in my mind. It's, um, it's a direct debit collection um, mm. and we'll be looking um, to the Institute of Fundraising to monitor those collections for us. Mm -hmm. Direct debits fall in a bit of a grey area in between street collections and house to house collections. Um, therefore, that the Institute of Fundraising have the tools to monitor um, these people and manage the diary accordingly. And mm. certainly if... if um, the public feel threatened in any way we would encourage reports to be reported to us and those will be fed back to the Institute of Fundraising. Okay, thank you. Turn your mic off please, sir. thank you. Um, Councillor Jay. Yeah, it's a quick question. <clears throat> um, it's limited to three a year, right? What's that based on? Have you got data? Is that what other authorities do? Why, why is it limited to the only three? Strange number. Yeah, it, it, it's kind of based on um, what other local authorities, their approach is. Um, but if you think there's only so many numbers of weeks in a year and so many charities wanting to come to collect, we kind of look to, res to, to try and restrict it in certain ways. If we get an application from an organisation, especially a local organisation, and they have already had three, and we have got a spare date in the diary, we would certainly look at trying to accommodate them. Yeah, that's good to hear. I mean, that was the point I was getting at. We wouldn't want to restrict somebody if there's space. So if you do that already, then that's, that's good, thanks. Thank you, Councillor Jay. Uh, has anybody else got any questions or comments? Okay, so the recommendation um, is that the committee endorse the draft charitable collections policy and to approve the document for public consultation. Um, got a favour for that? So, uh, yeah, Councillor Jeff. When we say endorse the draft, how do the amendments fit into that? We're part, of, we're part of the consultation process, so they would feed into the consultation and this, this report, will, uh, this will then, policy will then come back to us before it was to go to uh, full council. Okay, I just feel like endorsing it, it's kind of endorsing it as it is, whereas rather than with amendments, but... Uh, yeah. There may be amendments in the consultation process that council has done so. Okay, yeah, uh, will then amendments be made prior or... Yeah. Councillor Kingston, if it was. Yeah, if you look at the recommendation, is to endorse the draft, draft charitable collections policy and to approve the document for public consultation. So I would be a no under those circumstances. Okay. Um, I've, just spoke, I've, I've just spoke to the officers. They're happy to include your, um, your changes to the policy before that was to go out. Um, so if we want to change the wording of the recommendation um, to... Uh, to include them, uh, the the changes that Councillor um, Kingston has, has made. So if I can get a, a, a mover and a seconder for that. So moved by Councillor Kingston, seconded by Councillor Jay. All those in favour? Okay, so that's covered. Thank you, everybody. Tracy, have you got all that noted? Okay, uh, so that brings us on to agenda item number six, which is the scrap metal policy 2024-2028. Uh, and again, I'll hand over to Sarah for this one. Thank you again, Chair. The Council, in its capacity as licensing authority, is required to consider applications for scrap metal sites and collectors. There is currently no policy in force for these activities and it is considered necessary and appropriate for such a policy to be prepared, consulted upon and published in order to ensure that applications for this type of authorisation are considered and determined in a fair, consistent and transparent manner. 
The draft policy sets out the legal requirements and application processes along with the licensing authority's approach to preventing nuisance to residents and businesses located within Tamworth Borough and the enforcement of unlicensed activities. There are currently three licensed sites within Tamworth Borough and currently nine collectors licensed to collect within Tamworth Borough. Licenses last for a period of three years. The committee is asked to recommend to Cabinet that the draft scrap metal policy be approved for public consultation. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, has anybody got any questions or comments on this one? Councillor Clements. You say there's only nine collectors in Tamworth. I think I get that many down my road just on a Sunday, one after the other. Um, I've reported a number of vehicles that I don't believe to be licensed um, and I've never had any feedback as to what happens to those red plates to the descriptions I've given but I'm very very surprised that we've only got nine registered um, because as I say I can get one after the other down I don't know why bowl hall seems to attract scrap metal um, and I'm sure that there's, there's other areas that are just as bad but uh, every time you go up the road, somebody else has dumped something. So um, I'm very surprised that there's only nine. I can certainly understand your frustrations. And we've built into the um, policy in that um, as a licensing authority, we can ask for information on the application form that we feel relevant to us determine an application. At the minute, a license is granted to an individual but that individual needs a vehicle to transport the scrap metal. We don't license the vehicles. All they're required to do is display a copy of their license within the vehicle. Um, so one of the proposals is that we will be asking for registration details of the vehicles. So we will be able to then go on and make those necessary checks in relation to the registered keepers um, and hopefully have a bit more of a clue to follow, follow those up. Uh, Councillor Wade. Evening. I think w what's happening is that the people that are coming to collect the scrap metal, I think they're, they're not Tamworth based. I think the Birmingham side, to the people I, I, I've encountered in and around Glasgow, and they all seem to be Birmingham side. And I think it's having the metal. Collected is a good thing. We need it. So we, I, I don't want to be good these people that come and make a living from the scrap metal because we, we'd have piles of it else. Because our borough wouldn't help with the amount of metal that gets chucked out. But one thing that we would like is that they actually display something to say that they're from Tamworth. Them, when they come to collect your washing machine and they give you a Birmingham badge, well, we could give it to a, a Tamworth person who's making a living. I don't know. But that's my perception of it. Just to clarify, an individual doesn't have to reside in Tamworth to be granted a collector's licence. It's if they're collecting within Tamworth um, that they require a licence from us. So if somebody's showing you a Birmingham licence, but they're collecting in Tamworth, they, they shouldn't be collecting, they need a licence from us. The collector should also be um, acquiring certain information, which is detailed in the policy, every time they collect scrap metal, and registers should be kept, and those registers will be inspected um, by officers. Um, they also were required to display the permits that, are, that is issued within the vehicle that they're using to collect the scrap. It's, it's okay for, say, this information, but not being funny, but we're not dealing with English people. And it's, you, they can't get in their head that they need this 
document we we you know what I mean it's like we we take we take so I think we need to come up with a, a different way of how we go about issuing licenses and who we issue them to and where they can go and I think we need it to be clear on it. The policy um, when it goes out for consultation will certainly be advertised. Um, at present, because we don't record vehicle details, it's quite difficult for us to follow up any unlicensed collectors. We're a bit stuck in, in where we go with that information, but we do work quite closely with the police and with the National Crime Agency um, when we receive reports of unlicensed collectors. Sorry, if I can just add something as well in relation to people leaving scrap metal out, technically householders do have a responsibility to ensure that their waste is disposed of correctly and collected by a registered person, so they have a duty of care themselves and could face criminal prosecutions themselves for leaving the waste out in the first place. So we really don't want to be encouraging people to leave scrap out on the street initially and I've, I've been told the residents that. <laughs> I appreciate what you're saying, yeah, and it is an education that we need to obviously get out there, but yeah, there is a householder duty of care in relation to leaving waste out on, on site. Okay, uh, thank you, Wendy. Uh, Councillor Lemons and Councillor Jay afterwards, please. Can you just um, tell us, you said there's three sites. Where are those three sites? I'm aware of the one in Kingsbury. Sorry, yeah. That's not in Tamworth's area. It's actually licensed by Norfolk. So where are the three sites that we've got in Tamworth then? Because that's a question you could ask when you're giving it. I, mean, I only ever use Taronis because I know they're registered and they're reasonably decent people. Um, but where are the three sites that we've got in Tamworth that they should be taking it to? I don't have that information in front of me, but one um, is TechMet, I believe. Um, the, the one, Councillor Clements, that you've just mentioned, and there is another, Briars? Briars and Yeah. Yeah. And so I don't know what the third one is. Tech, 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 I don't, I've not seen an issue, but we're spending time talking about is there an issue? Is there data that shows there's an issue and people are leaving stuff out and people are getting hurt and stuff's happening? Or is there an issue there? Because I'm not aware of one. Wendy? Um, yes, we are aware that there has been a problem with unlicensed scrap metal dealers in the area, collectors mainly. The residents, we started talking about there about the residents should Sorry. know they could get fined and all that kind of stuff. Is there an issue? Because you know, we shouldn't be talking about you know, resins in that way and push onto them if there's no issue. Yeah, as far as that wouldn't fall within the remit of environmental health, it is within another section that enforce that, but there is an issue with duty of care generally and householders disposing of their waste correctly, not necessarily just scrap. Obviously, they have an awful lot of fly tipping in the, in the borough as well, so it, I'm just reiterating there is a responsible sort of duty of care on householders to ensure that whoever is collecting their waste is actually licensed about fly tipping there tonight, talking about scrap, right? Is there a scrap issue? Have there been issues where people have left it out and, uh, you know, not, not heard not of one? Not as far as I'm aware, no. Right, okay. So there isn't one then. Okay, thank you. Councillor Thurgood. Thank you, Chair. Um, thought comes to mind, we're talking about scrap policies. To my mind, with the environment and the trying to reduce emissions and, and um, harmful um, 
materials. Um, what I'm thinking is, does within our scrap, scrap policy actually um, see us checking to see how, say, a washing machine is stripped down? Obviously, we've got copper, we've got steel, um, probably some cast parts as well. But how about the parts that aren't recyclable? Do we know what they're doing with it to make sure that we actually are coming at a clean end of the, the product's life? Um, and the other thing was, when we talk scrap, we generally talk about um, metals, bronze, brass, copper, gold, if you're lucky enough. Um, but there's also things like soft furnishings. We see um, householders put out settees. We see those, well, some of those settees on the side of roads. Um, in terms of scrap there, is there any, I don't know, regulation within what we're talking about um, which will cover those sort of areas? Sarah? Page 40 of your agenda pack, there is um, a definition of what scrap metal includes within the scope of the policy and the scope of the legislation. Um, in relation to um, the first question, registers are required to be kept by the collectors but also by the sites mm -hmm. in that when they receive scrap, in what they do with that scrap and those registers are, do form part of the inspection that officers <coughs> will conduct um, and it would form part of them being a responsible site owner to dispose of those articles that aren't scrap, mm. even though they fall outside of this policy, yeah. um, in a responsible manner. Is what sort of auditing would take place on that? Mm. Now, what sort of auditing would take place to um, confirm that? We inspect the sites on a yearly basis um, and um, inspect <coughs> the records that, that the sites are required to take. Would you say once a year is sufficient? Once a year is sufficient, if we receive complaints about or concerns about that site, mm -hmm. um, then we would follow up with a further visit. And we wouldn't condone, I don't know, burning off of rubbish, um, tyres, whatever? Again, that falls outside of this, and I'd have to call on my colleagues from, from another department. If we, can, if we can just keep the questions related to the policy itself. No, what I'm thinking, Chair, is that a tyre contains steel cord within it, which could be uh, worth something, or worth recovering. I'm not sure that, that, that. Not I don't that think that falls that. into the policy. If you, if you read what the, poli the policy gives you a definition of what is classed as scrap metal, okay. so if you read the policy with regards to what that, what that definition is, then that should answer your question with regards to the question of what that can be. Okay, turn it around slightly. Um, waste computers that contain gold. Would that be covered if somebody was to put a computer out? Gold doesn't is not covered in scrap metal under this policy. Um, oh, sorry, yeah, you're saying doesn't include gold, silver, or alloys. Okay, thank you. Any more questions, Councillor Wade? Well, I can answer some of uh, Councillor Thurpe uh, questions is dryers, all their rubber goes into uh, all uh, Sorry, arenas. Sorry, Councillor Wade, I just want to keep the questions related to the policy. Yeah. Um, I mean, if you want to catch up with Councillor yeah, Thurpe yeah. afterwards and, and, and pass on that information, that would be great. No problem, Spock. Okay. Has anybody got any questions or comments relating to the policy? No. Okay. So uh, the recommendation is that the uh, committee endorse the scrap, uh, the draft, I can't say that word tonight, endorse the draft scrap metal policy and to approve the document uh, for public consultation. But I think it's actually to recommend it to Cabinet to go for public consultation. Can we have that recommendation changed, Tracy, in the minutes to reflect that, please? So it's it's the the recommendation should actually read committee to endorse the draft scrap metal policy and to approve uh, and to recommend the document to cabinet for public consultation. Uh, can I get a mover for that recommendation, please? Moved by Councillor Kingston, seconder, and seconded by Councillor Lee Wood.
uh, all can those I, in favour? Sorry, can I ask a clarification question? Of course. To uh, demo services, as we've got two members of cabinet on here tonight, if it's going to cabinet for decision, should we abstain to not be, uh, you know? Yeah. Otherwise, you're recommending it to ourselves, so then, you know. consulting on that. I don't think you need Or is the point there like and I don't, I think council I, we, we, we've had plenty we've had policies before that have been recommended to cabinet and when um, Councillor Doyle sat on the committee before and he's never had to um, abstain or anything like that. Um, I don't yeah. believe it's an issue. Yeah. Yeah. Alright fine. I just wanted to clarify yeah. before. Yeah. Okay. No, that's great. Uh, so uh, we've got a mover and a seconder. All those in favour? Okay, and that's unanimous, that's carried. Thank you, everybody. Um, that brings us on to agenda item number seven, which is the sexual establishment policy 2024 to 2028. And again, I'll hand over to Sarah for this one. Thank you, Chair. The Council, in its capacity as licensing authority, is required to consider applications for sexual establishment venues. There is currently no policy in force for these activities and it is considered necessary and appropriate for such a policy to be prepared, consulted upon and published in order to ensure that applications for this type of authorisation are considered and determined in a fair, consistent and transparent manner. The draft policy sets out the legal requirements and application processes along with the licensing authorities' approach to preventing nuisance to residents and businesses located within Tamworth Borough and the enforcement of unlicensed activities. There is one amendment to the draft policy which will require noting on page 77 of your agenda pack, paragraph 3.2.1 of the draft policy should read all applications for the grant of a new licence where representations or objections are received will be determined by the licensing committee. There is currently one licence premise within Tamworth Borough and the committee is asked to recommend that the draft sexual establishment policy be approved for public consultation. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Sarah. Um, so, hand over to the floor. Has anybody got any questions or comments relating to the policy? <coughs> Councillor Kingston. Yeah, I, I, I may have missed this, so I do apologise if it's in the policy, but I've been looking for it. If we have an establishment that isn't a sex entertainment establishment that decides to hold a one-off event, do does this a policy a apply to them or is there a separate policy? I believe premises can hold up to 11 events per year falling outside of requiring a licence. I believe it's in there somewhere um, but I can certainly have a look through and, and point it out to you. Um, that just sounds a little bit concerning given the um, nature of some of the references in this and the um, Government Act, the piece of legislation that an establishment can hold 11 events without any um, any, uh, any checks and balances in place. Obviously, the, the, the normal licence would normal, you know, a liquor licence, an alcohol licence would um, debar them from behaving in certain ways. Um, and I'm certainly no prude having, um, in my capacity as a magistrate, sitting on the old licensing thing, had to visit some establishments when, the, um, when we dealt with this aspect of the legislation. Um, but it does just concern me that 11 events seems an awful lot for one. Is that government legislation or our policy? That's government legislation. Um, it, it might be under this part or it might be under actually the Licensing Act that's, that's classed as relevant entertainment, which kind of crosses over into this piece of legislation. But it's, yeah, it's written into legislation that 11 events can happen in a calendar year. Um, with regard to checks and balances, those events would happen at licence uh, venues. They are required to inform us of, of the intention to hold 
um, those events and they would have to abide by the conditions on the premise license. Yeah, and that's not questions, just uh, I know it's government legislation, there's nothing we can do about it, but it, it's just a bit laughable after the previous ones restricted uh, collection, charity collections to three a year, yet adult entertainment events <laughs> is 11 a year with no license. Anyway, and it's not our doing, it's the government, but it just seems uh, bizarre. I think just just for clarity, the 11 events is 11 sexual entertainment events. That's 11 events that a venue can hold outside. So tens notices, is that right? It's 11 separate events that a premise can hold that are classed as relevant entertainment. So as well as, as well as their tens. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. yes. I mean, yeah, fair comment then, TJ. That's that is fair enough. That is a bit weird, but hey we have. Um, Councillor Wade uh, and then I've got Councillor Clements afterwards. Just, just an off the cuff question. What about these people that hold these and summers parties? Don't they need any licence? Because they're selling sex products, don't they, at the end of the bloody day. Is that covered? <laughs> no, that's, that's not included in the policy, John. Councillor Clements, I've got you next. I was just going to say, Chair, that if a licensed premises was holding a sexual entertainment event, I think we would know about it before their application went in, because it's only a small town, and um, our licensing officers have got their noses to the grindstone and know exactly what's going on where. So I don't think we need to worry, but I do take on board as well Councillor Jay's comments, you know, as a charity we can only go out three times a year and we need a licence, but sexual, educa sexual education, sexual entertainment can do whatever you want. I, I don't know what Ansomers is, I'm sorry. Um, thank you for that, Councillor Clements. Uh, anybody else? Councillor Jay? Just no. Okay, okay, um, okay. If we've got no more questions or comments, so uh, the recommendation is to seek members' approval of the draft uh, sexual establishment policy uh, and a set of draft standard conditions for sexual establishment licences in order that they may be circulated for consultation. Um, Councillor Kings. Yeah, just to come in there. Now that you've read that out, it says circulated for consultation. Yep. Is that public consultation? Is that can we just have that mentioned in there? It was mentioned in the other one. I just think for clarity, yeah. it would be wise to say that goes for public consultation. And if that's the case, then I'm happy to second, <coughs> propose, rather. Uh, that, that is noted in there. Thank you, Councillor Kingston. So uh, can I get a mover and a seconder for, for that? Councillor Kingston moved, seconder. Councillor Clements, uh, all those in favour? That is unanimous and that is carried. And that brings us to the end of tonight's agenda. So thank you, everybody, for coming. And thank you for your contributions. Thank you to the officers. Uh, I'll see you at the next meeting. Thank you.